I've got this uh, transfer case ready to go. Unfortunately, the oil seals won't be in until Monday. But it's all built back up again, which is a nice thing. But I just wanted to show you a couple of things how I actually made this. Because this is a memorandum for me too. So what I did first of all, we had the rear flange copied off this. This is uh, um, an adapter for an another gearbox. But the guys at the CNC shop measured all this, so now that's in their computer. We can make loads of them. So first of all we got that, and most importantly, the reference for the hole here. Now, this is the clever bit. We also had a gasket that goes on the back of the gearbox. This was good as well because we could copy that to give our bolt pattern, if you see what I mean. So there's our bolt pattern and also in here is the boss which sits inside the transmission. Okay, that's easy isn't it? The next thing we bought, this great big piece of steel, solid steel. In actual fact, we could have maybe got away with a bit of uh, tube, but there was a lot of machining on this. So what we did was, we turned this piece down and put a, a boss on it, which would fit through here, all right, to keep that concentric. So that was turned, the middle piece was turned to fit in the boss here. It was also turned to fit this ring so this would slip over the top and then I welded them together. The crucial measurements are this was 60 millimeters wide and I had a bit of a struggle trying to get the um, the orientation right because this is the most important thing. Making flanges, pff, walk at the park, that's easy. Getting the distance, pff, Stevie Wonder could do it. But the thing was you need to get the orientation right so what that means is I needed to, uh, when I had the engine out, I found a nice piece of the engine that was level. So I put a spirit level on top of the engine and on this bit. Not this bit, not this bit at the top, but this bit is level and horizontal. How do I know that? Well, I checked it about four or five different vehicles whilst they were in uh, the shop and came to the conclusion that when this transfer case is mounted, this is the level top. And once you've got a level datum to work from, everything's easy. So, I sort of keep in this gasket as a, a reference gasket, so I've marked the orientation. This is the, the hole behind here, where the stud comes through, where the bolt comes through, and it's 31 millimeters center, and that's the top. This gasket can only go on one way, remember that too. So, once you've done all that, I, it did take time in messing about, but until we got the shaft, we didn't know the distance the shaft could be. So once we knew that, it was back down to the CNC shop, who put this onto... We knew this face was flat, because it had been turned. They put this on the bed and faced off the back of the uh, LT230. So then, once we knew that was flat, because obviously we've been welding and messing about, eh? So plates get distorted. So once we knew that was flat, they put that on the deck and then bored out the depth, the proper dimension to put the circlet groove in. Bob's your uncle. So, oh, and also we put a spacer in there because we didn't know really where we we're going to go. But that's basically how we did it. So as you can see now, I've got the truck up in the air. I'm going fit, to fit this uh, transfer case. Now, I have fitted, I'm going, I've fitted this adapter first because as you all know, fitting a 10 spline is a bit of a bugger. But to fit um, a 27 spline is quite easy, if you see what I mean. When I turn this, that's going to line up beautifully. So let's have a quick look underneath and refresh ourselves how I did the mountings on this. Now I hope you can see that um, with this light, it isn't very strong. But um, I actually welded Disco 2 mountings onto the chassis. So I didn't need the cross member off a 300 TDI, give me a bit more space, and I managed to incorporate the, the bigger cross member off the 2.5 naturally aspirated, and everything works lovely. And you can see there where the downpipe comes through, so once I get the shafts in, I should be okay. 
So what I've got to do is I've got the mountings actually off the transfer case at the moment. I've put a bit of molybdium grease on the spline, a bit of grease on what's left of that gasket, that'll be fine. And then uh, it's just a matter of getting it in, if you see what I mean. And then once that's in, I can sort of play around with the handbrake, which I've already rebuilt, join up the speedo cable, and then just wait for the seals so I can put the prop shafts on. So let me get on and let's get that box in. <clears throat> I was about to fit this transmission, I, thought, I forgot one vital thing. Test this thing. This is the diff lock switch and it's a good job I did too. I actually put it through the sandblaster to clean the uh, little terminals. But when I came to check it on the vehicle, there was nothing. And when I check it now, oops. But like I said, there's, there's continuity so we know that's okay. But we press it down, nada. We've put a new one on. Look, I can send a distress signal. So, check them. Because the, on like your two, uh, 200 TDIs and your turbo diesels, your 2.5s, with the square type transmission cover, getting to this is a bit of a bugger. It's easier with a plastic cover, um, but it's, it's worth doing now. So, once that's done, we'll, we'll set it up. Now, this has a big jam nut on it here, like a spacer. And I think this is a special one that's preset. It's not just any old nut. So back again, I took a little bit off that nut, uh, just a couple of thousandths of an inch. You have to turn the, the, this sometimes just to get it to engage. See what I mean? That's out. See there's no diff lock on there. Put the diff lock in, and it works. So that's good. So we're going to box that up. That's good. Let's get this in, as the bishop said to the actress. I might as well do another little thing just before I do get this all in. This is the interlock, because this came off a of Disco 2. This is the interlock for an automatic. That means you can't shift gears or your high and low diff lock or whatever you want to do until this is energised and pulls the pin out so it, it locks you, your uh, high and low this is a sensor to tell you that the light's on and at the front here there's another switch we don't need those, we don't need those it would have been nice to uh, have uh, incorporated them somehow but I can't see the point anyway, now we'll get it in so there we go, I've, uh, I've got the gearbox, the transfer case in, I've got the plug out of there so I know there's no oil in it. I moved the ground wire to the back of the case in and I'm going to make a bracket to hold the brake uh, cable up. Talking about the brake cable, I'm also going to make something to go on the back of there, where the handbrake goes, just to strengthen it up a bit. Uh, yeah, no, it worked out nice. What I was experimenting with the other day, I did find an oil seal for the front of here. And I put a V8 prop shaft on because, as you can see, where the exhaust comes out up there, look, that's going to come really nice down the side of here, nice and uh, nice flow straight down and round the back of this cross member. Now that will do two things: it'll keep the car together, stop it falling apart, but it also will protect that uh, exhaust when it's off-road. Then the other pipe will come down from that side up there. Obviously I've got pipes and wires to tidy up yet, I haven't finished that. And the joint should be around here somewhere, so that's going to be nice. Again, stoked for parts, so there should be in on Monday. And then we can get this boxed up. But you can see underneath here, look. See how there's plenty of room for the, uh, for the axle to move and to miss. I've got a couple of bolts that's missing out of there, I've got them to put in. But it's, uh, it's uh, going to be a nice conversion. Yeah, it's going to be good. Got a few more bits of wells I've got to touch up, but apart from that, not too bad. Anyway, that's that'll do for this bit, uh, and then we'll get on and show you some more other bits and pieces. Because, like I say, I can't do anything till I get the exhausts in. <laughs> 